testing one, two. Guys, guys, we're going down. Well, don't say that. No, no, no. Come back, come back, come back. Thank you. Okay. Would you turn it this way, Lord Mayor, please? I'd just like to uh, say a brief couple of words of welcome to Dublin to the President and Mrs. Reagan and those travelling with him. Kid me the fortune, the volume of clear. A hundred thousand welcomes to Dublin. On behalf of the people of our capital city, my wife and I and all of these city, city council colleagues gathered here together, along with our city manager, extend to you both and to those travelling with you a most sincere and warm welcome. You have come, Mr. President, to a most historic city where every stone has a story to tell of the past. This green and peaceful park, which for generations has echoed with the ringing shouts of people at play, belies slow struggle to be born, which our ancient city has endured. Dublin has been close to the heart of every major national, political, social and cultural movement. The names of our great sons and daughters burn brightly in the pages of our history. Their inspiration and achievement still enrich our way of life. Yes, Dublin's heart is old and warm, and today it opens itself to you in friendship and welcome. It is easy for us, because our country's name is synonymous with welcome, and it is also right that we should do so. Many an Irish family left the sickly streets and barren hillsides of our past and found refuge and new hope in your country and in others. Those travellers in turn worked and fought to help make your country great. The contribution abroad of this mighty little nation has been extraordinary and speaks eloquently for many lands. In that process, bonds of great friendship have been created between the peoples of our two countries. Let us work to strengthen these at civic and political levels. So often it is nations who look outwards in friendship who solve problems, while those who look inwards in distrust create them. And yet our eyes, like yours, Mr. President, are set on the future, on the great challenges which lie before us all. Like you, we realise that these difficulties, great or small, are in reality opportunities which demand the very best of our human resources very best of our generosity, our compassion, our love for each other. In the face of the development and growth within nations and between nations, of all those noble qualities which make us truly human, no problem is too great. Whether between cities or between continents, let us continue to approach one another centre to centre. That way lies understanding and peace. Robert Kennedy said one time, I hope Mr. President will forgive me for quoting a Democrat, <laughs> that very few men get the chance of changing the world, although each of us gets the opportunity to change a little piece. You, Mr. President, are one of the few who have the power to change a very great deal. We do not envy you those awesome responsibilities, the urgent quest for world peace, the hunger that racks over half our globe, the wars within nations, the threats of unemployment and of our restless young people, economic disorder, environmental degeneration, these and others are major and daunting tasks. But on behalf of all of the people of the city, on behalf of the people of this country, I would like you to know that you have the highest hopes, the fondest good wishes, and the most fervent prayers of all Dubliners and of all people of Ireland in your efforts to confront such challenges.
hope you enjoy the class. fall out and break, we'll all be in trouble then. Okay now? Keep back, lads, please. That's it, sir. This way, Mr. Bowman. That's what you meant by common
emotional day for you, Mr. President? What? Was yes. it an emotional day for you, sir? Yes, of course. I think much more so than the fact that for so much of my life, uh, I never knew anything about my ancestry because my father had been orphaned before he was six years of age. He didn't know Now to have it all, I'm very grateful to Ireland because they made all the knowledge possible. Mr. President, are you hoping to come back someday? Of course. <laughs> How soon? <laughs> How soon? Well, I, I've got a little matter to take up this fall that will determine <laughs> some of my future schedule. Could you indicate what that is? <laughs> Could you indicate what that is? Like <laughs> It's a little November ceremony that we have to go through in America. <laughs> Are you going to be the winner? Now that's a question that I would never answer that way. I, I figure that you jinx yourself if you say that. And I have told I can buy ten some of your people weren't quite right aware of it when I said that in our country, President Dewey told me never to be overcome. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Who's doing their thing? Okay, that's it. Oh, no. 